now we've uh, removed all the standard and everything, uh, we have to make a, a new block to sit in here, the base of our standard. Uh, before we do that though, um, here, uh, when I removed the old standard, um, there was these two, you can see two oval kind of holes um, at the back of this sliding section here. And inside them, uh, there was a plastic tab with some springs. Uh, they held on the leaf spring here, which kind of popped the, the standard up. Uh, since we removed the standard and that kind of teardropped um, kind of screw thing, uh, the leaf springs were springing free and basically they were doing nothing. So I popped these, got a screwdriver, uh, jammed it in these oval holes and the, the plastic tab fell out and along with them there was attached um, a spring like this. Uh, basically you just have to unhook it from the metal kind of tab on the sliding section here. There's two of these. <clears throat> if you don't remove them, I find that, that it can catch and kind of just get in the way, so I just ripped them out. Um, I, I don't know, it, it might be optional, but I decided to take them out. And um, also, uh, before we get into the actual block, uh, these holes where the pivot pin was actually mounted before, they were four millimeters in diameter. Um, I decided to shim these up with a, uh, I'll get into kind of why a bit later when we make the block, but I decided to shim these up with a section of brass pipe to make two uh, bushings. Uh, the inner diameter is uh, three millimeters, outer four, so they fit in there nicely and they provide now a three millimeter diameter hole. Right, so here's a close-up of the, uh, the bushing. You can see that um, there's a lighter coloured kind of ring inside this darker yellowy coloured metal. The original dark one is the uh, original bushing. It's 4mm diameter, inner diameter. And uh, the lighter coloured ring here is the, the brass bushing I made. And yeah, that's just a, a section of pipe. And yeah, I made one for each side. Now, to um, make this block here, I, I got a piece of ebony. Um, this is 15 millimeters high by 23 uh, long or depth, and this dimension here is 74 on this particular piece. But um, I have two cameras going: this one, and there's another one for four, five, four by five sheet film. And the two cameras were slightly different. Um, <coughs> From what I've seen, uh, there, there seem to be at least three versions of the Polaroid 900. Uh, one is, or well, this particular one, uh, this has a grey kind of semi-gloss paint on this front standard. Um, this tab here is also red. Now this particular one um, seemed to have a 74mm um, width here. I have another one which is the same roughly, uh, except this tab indicator here is white and also this bulb uh, lever is more rounded and it's kind of harder to get out. That one seems to be slightly wider and there seems to be another version floating around which has this whole uh, section here uh, painted in a kind of crinkle black paint and uh, this focus knob is not silver, it's grey. That version might be different again but I don't have a, a specimen so I don't know. But anyway, you should measure between these uh, two kind of struts here and you should get some block which will fit in nice and snug between them. Um, <clears throat> the block can be any material basically as long as it's solid and you can work with it. So uh, any metals, woods, uh, plastic, anything. So you have a block now um, and it will fit in here like so. Now, as you can see here, I have already drilled the two front uh, kind of lock pins. Now, these were placed in a almost kind of arbitrary fashion, basically. I set a pencil, uh, pretend this is a pencil, I set it on my 
uh, desk and I basically just scribed across like so uh, marking a line along here so it was level along the bottom looking at this, this is roughly 5 millimeters off the bottom and I did the same for this dimension except I shimmed it a bit more and marked and this is maybe 8 millimeters or so uh, from the front so like this and basically with points crossed I drilled a 2 millimeter diameter hole uh, for these two pins. Now these two pins are 3.2 millimeters uh, in diameter and they come from the original front standard. Um, if you open up this uh, this front standard, it comes in two halves, there's three screws uh, which you undo and then it'll just pop straight open and you can access the other side of these two pins on either side and if you just bang them out uh, you'll get two perfectly sized pins. Now the shaft of them is um, I think 2.23 millimeters. So in wood, it was good. Uh, a two millimeter diameter hole was good in wood because you could kind of tap it in; it would be nice and tight. For metal, obviously, you have to be a bit more precise and drill the correct hole, uh, or you can use your own section of rod or whatever. But um, I use the original pins because obviously they fit nicely. Um, so these are in now and I've tapped them in nicely and this now slots in like so and it will kind of uh, rest on there. Now it's important to do, I found, to do these two lock pins first before you drill the back uh, pivot pins because this lets you align up the um, position and then you can later uh, position the, the back piece, uh, the back rod. So, well, the basic, I'll go into the basic construction of my design of my uh, base block here before I show you anything else because um, you can design any design you like as long as it has the two pins and it's kind of steady in there. <clears throat> the design I'm doing is basically lock pins here at the front and at the back I, I'm going to route out the channel. Uh, Four, four millimeters uh, wide and uh, however deep I'll, I'll, I'll tell you you know we'll have to decide how deep it has to go from uh, the alignment here but uh, four millimeters wide and that will be a channel just going all the way across and in that channel I will embed a section of the the brass pipe I used for the bushings now I'm doing that because um, as a, a kind of axle for this to pivot round, instead of using screws like the original, I'm going to use a section of three millimeter brass rod, and that will fit nicely uh, inside this pipe. And since this pipe's the same as this, these bushings, it will be a perfect kind of alignment and straight and solid. So I'll embed this into the channel, four millimeters out of diameter, as I said, for this uh, pipe. So it will fit in there nicely and I'll just epoxy it down and uh, that will be a nice, perfectly straightly aligned, um, hopefully, uh, back pivot pin axle thing. So uh, that's my design, but you can just, uh, you know, measure it, tap in some screws or something and just kind of uh, screw them in from these sides. Uh, anything will work but I thought this is the most kind of foolproof way and uh, for someone without a drill press um, <clears throat> it's it's quite easy to do as long as you have a router I guess uh, but anyway um, I'm sure you can work something out so now you have the front pins in you have to make uh, you have to find out where to drill or locate your rear pivot pin so to do that I'll put this in, this is why you have to do the front pins first because you need this for alignment. Now you put this in and it will kind of sit in the the groove for the original kind of lock pins and you'll put it in there and you'll just lock it in place uh, on the uh, infinity stop thing here. And now you can see it's kind of like rotating nicely but there is some play. <coughs> Now the original location of these lock pins was slightly further forward, so if you force it this way, um, it will give, I'll give you a close up, 